Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on my brand new box. But of course, it's just not any box. Inside it, hopefully, is my new rotary table. I've been on the fence for quite a while about whether or not to buy one of these, and given that I already have the dividing head, the prospect of ending up with two very expensive spinny things that almost do the same thing, well, it was a bit hard to justify. In fact, if you had a Venn diagram, there'd be a lot of overlap in what these two things can do. But I think there is enough of a difference that it made sense for me to buy one of these for a few parts that I need to make. So let's get it out of the box and see exactly what I've bought. Looks like they've included some T-nuts to hold parts to the faceplate. Dear Lord, I hope that's an oil stain. Okay, well, first impressions now that I've gotten it all cleaned up, and, well, it's not too bad. Everything looks to be nicely machined and well put together. There are one or two sharp corners which needed taking down, but apart from that, I didn't have any big complaints. And you know what, I really wouldn't expect any major issues since this is a company that I've bought stuff from before and their stuff seems to be well regarded. Now specs wise, this is a 100mm tilting rotary table. So that faceplate is 100mm in diameter and that puts it on the smaller side for these tools. However, it should be the right size for my chucks and that's why I bought this specific size. It also tilts to about 95 degrees, which should be pretty useful for a lot of parts that I need to make. And it's also connected to a 36 to 1 worm drive. So every full turn of that hand wheel should move it 10 degrees. And in turn, obviously 36 turns of the hand wheel should rotate the table once. There's also a graduated scale on the side to give you a rough idea of what angle it's tilting, but obviously if you wanted it to be really accurate, you'd need to indicate it in. And speaking of which, I am fully aware that having this tilt function is going to rob me of a huge chunk of rigidity, but it is in part this tilt function that is the reason why I bought it in the first place. I have a few parts that need to be indexed and tilted at the same time to make them, so buying this model made the most sense. Now at this point, you'd probably point out, well, doesn't a dividing head do pretty much all that too? And, well, yes, you'd be right. There is a lot of overlap between what dividing heads and rotary tables can do, but I think in a few areas, the rotary table is a bit better for some of the work that I need to do. For one, a big disadvantage of the dividing head that I have run into is the fact that it is physically larger, and I've run into a lot of clearance issues with the spindle and my tooling running into the chuck. The rotary table, however, should be able to fit my smaller chucks, and I should hopefully be able to avoid some of those clearance issues. Secondly, it's not really set up to cut with the chuck facing upwards, and in the few times that I've had to cut with the chuck facing vertically, there was almost no room for the part and the tooling once I'd gotten it all set up. The rotary table, by contrast, is effectively half the height of the dividing head, and even with a chuck installed, it isn't going to be as tall as the dividing head. So with this setup, I can now index parts that are now laying flat. And finally, I should be able to use the rotary table to cut radius curves, and that is something that the dividing head really struggles with. The dividing head really works best with the parts all firmly locked in place, 
In the few times that I have tried to cut curves with the dividing head, I have experienced the chuck unscrewing and coming loose, and that has caused me to scrap parts and break end mills. I'm sure there are ways of getting around that, but I'd still be left with the clearance issues that I talked about earlier. The dividing head really for the most part is just best suited for indexing and gear cutting, which is really what I mostly use it for. I am aware that they do sell dividing plates for rotary tables, which further blurs the lines between what rotary tables and dividing heads are used for, but from what I've seen, most of the plates that are sold are for 90 to 1 rotary tables, which this one isn't. Although I guess with a milling machine and DRO, you can always make your own indexing plates if you really wanted to. Now before I move on, let me quickly talk about price. I paid just over 200 bucks for it, which is really what I was expecting to pay for a piece of tooling this size. But as it also turns out, you can also buy this exact piece of kit for about 130 bucks online. Same exact thing, and it's probably made in the exact same factory, just under a different brand name. And I really wasn't aiming on buying the cheap piece of Chinese tooling like I usually do. I thought I was doing the right thing by buying the brand name piece of kit, but as you'll see, it has problems, and it probably isn't even worth 130 bucks. But before we can talk about that, we first need to mount a chuck to the faceplate, since that's how I'm going to be mounting most of the stuff to the rotary table. The challenge now is obviously to bolt the chuck, which bolts in from the back to the rotary table. And the answer obviously is to use a backplate. We can mount the chuck to the backplate and then mount it to the rotary table. And that's why I bought a 100mm rotary table for my 80mm chucks. We'll need that extra space on the outside for the mounting hardware. For the back plate, I have a piece of 12mm thick steel plate. I think the proper material would be cast iron for vibration damping, but I absolutely have seen them made from steel, and for a setup like this, it probably doesn't even matter. I've gotten the stock cut down to sized and faced, and I was about to measure the stock for the whole pattern, but I did notice that the piece of material was wobbling on the faceplate. As it turns out, the issue was with the faceplate. It seems that there are some burrs left from manufacturing, and that was causing the wobble. So what I'll do is I'll take a stone which I've lapped flat and I'll take down any high spots. And thankfully that seemed to work. I can now put it in the mill and then drill the holes for the mounting of the back plate as well as a hole in the centre to help locate the centre of the part.
Now the original plan was to mount the back plate onto the rotary table and then clean it up in situ on the mill. It obviously wouldn't be the quickest way to do it, but it should at least be concentric and it should also give me a chance to test out the rotary table. Unfortunately, however, I immediately ran into a few issues. For one, obviously it's not exactly rigid, which was to be expected, but there was also a fair amount of backlash in the worm gear, which caused it to vibrate a lot. Now of course there is a backlash adjustment, and that wasn't too difficult to adjust, but after fixing that, I also ran into a second problem, and that's the worm gear isn't actually constrained in place. So as you try to turn it under heavy loads, what it does is it pulls the whole assembly and it binds and locks up the hand wheel and it jams. It's not the first time that I've run into this issue. I had the exact same issue on the top slide and yes, I could fix it, but I just didn't have any time to fix it at that time. So I eventually had to settle for plan B and that was to mount it directly to the lathe spindle. And I had to do it this way because the piece of stock was just too big for any of my chucks to hold on to. The speed that I'm also running is a bit high for this work, but the carbide should be able to handle it. With the outside now cleaned up, I can now bore a hole in the center, which will allow me to flip the part and then mount it on an arbor. If I didn't hold it this way, I'd effectively be turning down those screws that were holding the part in place. The chuck that I'm going to be using is this three-jaw chuck that came with the lathe. It's not a particularly well-made chuck and it has its own run-out issues, but I haven't used it in well over a year and I might as well get some use out of it. I'll quickly tear it down and clean up any oxidation that's built up on it. With it now mounted, I can now start to tap out the run out. And after about 5 minutes, I got it down to about 30 microns or so of run out, which is easily good enough for what I need. Now at this point, I was about to set it up for milling, but I noticed there was also an extra reason why I might be having issues, and a reason that I should have picked up earlier on. It seems that the table is wobbling a fair bit when I go to lock it, and as you can probably see, it is a big amount of wobble too. And that is a bit disappointing, and it is a big issue. Now, I did try my best to fix it by resetting the bearings and the retaining screw to see if anything was loose. And whilst it may have improved it a little bit, it didn't seem to fix it. 
Now, I'm still not exactly sure if I have an issue with the bearing or the bearing seat, or if it's just a design issue that hasn't been addressed, but I do know that it shouldn't be like this. I do think that you know, a big part of the problem is just the design of that spindle lock that pushes the whole assembly over in order to lock it. And I think any movement at the ball bearing is going to be amplified up at the top. Now, unfortunately, I really did need to use the rotary table. So I ended up making a small modification to the rotary table. And that was to add a downwards clamp to the tool, which should hopefully act as a better lock and it should make it a bit more rigid. I didn't have a whole lot of material on hand, but an offcut of aluminium should work. It obviously won't fix everything, but it should work a whole lot better than that old lock. And as you can see, that does seem to work. Overall, I have gotten the rotary table to work, but just not in the way that I was initially hoping when I bought it. Really, I was hoping for a lot more, and I really wasn't trying to save money on this tool. I really did think I was buying the right tool for the right job, given the chucks that I have but ultimately it was pretty disappointing. With the wobbly table plus the hand wheel that is binding up has me come to the conclusion that I probably wouldn't recommend it unless you really needed it. I definitely will be able to get the use out of it that I needed to when I bought it, but probably not much more after that. I'll probably end up replacing this with one of those bigger non-tilting 6 inch rotary tables sometime in the future because those ones seem to have a much better reputation. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.